Hi, this is Mark Item from Honu Trading. Today's topic is the top 10 lessons for longer term investors. This is derived from over 30 years of experience working with individual investors. I started in 1985 as a retail broker with Merrill Lynch in Anchorage, Alaska, and retired in October of 2021 after 17 years teaching investing and trading for Charles Schwab as a regional investment strategist throughout Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. First, a disclaimer. Uh, as our college professors used to say, you will see this material again. You can follow me on Twitter at HonuMGMT. And finally, if you find today's topic valuable, take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. So here are my top 10 list. We'll go through each of these in a little more detail, but I want to start by showing you the whole list to see where we're going to go. Number one, define your why. The more clearly and more compelling you can define why you're investing, it becomes a powerful North Star that guides your actions. The why will lead you to a plan that leads to what you need to do, and then in detail, how you do those things. It's said that any road is the right one if you don't know where you're going. So I'm going to use retirement just as an example because that's a common goal for most investors. Rather than, gee, I want to retire at 65 and $100,000 a year or whatever. What's your vision for retirement? Where do you want to live? Do you want to have a second home, snowbird somewhere, travel a lot? What activities do you want to pursue? And then how much would that cost in today's dollar? And where are you today in relation to that goal? Now, the picture here is from our oceanfront condo in Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. If we hadn't set that as a goal, we would have never been able to make it happen. And in 2017, we finally did make that happen. So if you don't have a goal, you're not going to get there. The more clearly you define it, the more compelling it becomes. Number two, I told you you'd see this material again. Keep losses small. Nobody gets it right all the time. We're going to look at the mathematics of loss here in a moment, but even a long-term investor should rarely suffer more than a 25% loss. Paper cuts, not shark bites. Preservation of capital is truly job one. Now, my first two rules of investing paraphrase Warren Buffett. Don't lose much money. It's impossible not to lose. And then never forget the first rule, and this is simply discipline. The mathematics of loss are this. Losses are linear, 10, 20, 30, 50%. How much you need to make to recover from those losses becomes exponential. 10% loss, 11% gain. 20% loss, 25% gain. By the time you lose 50%, You've literally got to double what's left just to get back to even. Many people can make an 11% or 25% gain. Very few can do 100%. Number three, learn when to sell. If the facts change, change your mind. Buy and blindly hold is not the answer. And let's look at one of the shells of those former market leaders, Cisco Systems. In two years, it went from 30 on the way up to a peak of 82, back to 30. From peak to trough was a 90% drop. 17 years, it did absolutely nothing. And even today, in April of 2023, it's over 40% below that 2000 high. Now, it doesn't show on the monthly graph here, but at around 70, there was a clear change in trend. And I actually had many clients who owned Cisco when I was a broker at Merrill. And I recommended that them to sell. Almost to a person, they said virtually the same thing. I don't want to pay the taxes. Well, we're going to explore that a little more in a minute. But from your lips to the market devil's ears, they didn't have any taxes to pay. Another way to look at this is... In July of 2001, these were the five biggest companies, the S&P 500. And if I were to tell you that 20 years later, only Microsoft would still be in that top five, and that these other four solid companies were going to have significant drawdowns, you wouldn't believe me. 
but that's exactly what happened. In 2021, the top five consisted of Apple and Amazon that were in their infancy in July of 2001, Facebook and Amazon, or Google, Alphabet, those weren't even publicly traded in 2001. Let's look at Microsoft in a little more detail, because you'd have had to withstand 17 years of nothing. July of 99, it hit 60, didn't break above that for nearly 17 years. However, once it broke above that previous high, it went from 60 all the way to 360. And today, in April of 2023, it's just below 290. Number four, we're going to revisit Don't Be Afraid to Pay Taxes. Yet nobody likes to pay taxes. We should be tax efficient. But the key focus is that growing our equity curve is what moves us closer to our goals. I don't want to pay the taxes. Well, like I said earlier, from your lips to the market devil's ears. Number five, my version of the KISS principle. Keep it simple, super trader. You got to have a positive spin on it. You got to have some fun with it. But simple works better than complex because we can do it consistently, and it's that consistency that pays off over time. Investing is simple, but it's not easy. Year in and year out, the number one New Year's resolution is, gee, I want to lose weight. Like investing, it's simple. Oprah distilled weight loss to four words, eat less, move more. But it's not easy. That means saying no to the donut and yes to the salad taking the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator, not trying to win the parking lottery and park farther out in the lot at Costco. We need to understand and master our psychology. The emotions of greed and fear generally get us to do exactly the wrong thing at almost exactly the wrong time. Status quo bias means it's really easy to do absolutely nothing, to hold what we've got. And as I think it was Napoleon observed, any fool can do nothing successfully. Number seven, trade price, not opinions. Buy, sell, hold, overbought, oversold, cheap, expensive. Those are all opinions. Price is the final arbiter of value, and it's the only thing we can trade. The market's paradox is that what seems cheap often becomes cheaper. What seems expensive generally gets more expensive. Most novice investors would much rather buy a 52-week low because it's cheap than a 52-week high. We, oh, no, I can't do that. That's expensive. Yet in many cases, they'd be better off buying the 52-week highs. But it's hard to do. Again, simple but not easy. Number eight, don't fear corrections. This quote is from Peter Lynch, the legendary portfolio manager who put the Fidelity Mutual Fund Magellan on the market's map. Nobody knows anything in the markets, but if you know the market's going to fall, that leads to selling too soon. The bearish argument is almost always more intelligent sounding and seems more well-reasoned. Beware of the perma bears and be equally beware of, beware of the perma bulls. If you want to try and hedge your portfolio with options or you know, leveraged funds, there's a cost involved. But the big one is the fear of getting back in the markets. And even if you're successful at selling on the way down, well, I haven't run out of fingers to count the number of people who got back in at lower prices. Because if you sell on the way down, fear is driving that decision. And as the market gets lower, the news gets worse. And when markets bottom, the news is always at its worst. By the time the market's uh, by the time the news improves, the markets have already started to rally. Number nine, the acronym TIDE. This is why it's critical to define your why, because that leads you to devote the time, develop the interest and discipline to pursue the expertise. You've got to have a passion for the markets. If you don't, it's going to cost you money. If you don't have that passion, you're not going to develop a process. What kind of stocks are you looking for? What type of research will you do? When will you buy? When will you sell? What are your rules? Work that process consistently. Learn from your mistakes. Keep records. Refine that process. 
rinse, repeat, do the work. And this leads into the next one. If you don't have that time, interest, and discipline, it will cost you money. So how much is it costing you to manage your own money? Many individual investors don't want to pay any kind of fees, and that's fine, if you have that time, interest, and discipline. If you don't, well, if you think it's expensive to hire a professional, wait till you hire an amateur. There are very few places that this can be more costly over a long period of time than in the markets. And I'll leave you with a final positive note, the immortal words of Yoda. Trade well, manage risk, make it a great day.